wouldn't be too bad if we played ads like for two minutes of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we are back and well, welcome back to the best of five bonanza uh, between uh, Falcatre and POZ Eddie. The score is currently 4-3 to Falcon Shrey, so it is certainly possible that this could be the last game of the series if Falcon Shrey wins it. We do have, of course, Mr. Falcon Shrey in yellow up to the north of the map playing as Turks. And down to the south in the purple, we do have Eddie also playing as Turks as we're again in a mirrored matchup here. Yeah, map is Regicide Fortress, so it's a little bit different. We do, of course, have two... Uh, Pretty, pretty much completely well. They are completely walled bases, extra starting villages, uh, castles and towers galore as well, and even some farms to, I don't know, a, a complimentary welcome gift to the players. Definitely helps them power along here. And a nice statistic that we found actually before this one started, uh, Eddie has actually not lost a game with Turks yet. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. Um, out of the last 160 games, of which Eddie has played Turks, yeah, he's not lost a single game. So this could be nice for Eddie. Not only is it a walled map, which is like what he likes, um, Turks as well. Got a sieve he likes as well. So this could be Eddie's chance to push this one back and give us a Turbo Arabia. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, of course, this is a very interesting sieve. Uh, the potential for a fast Imperial here is gonna be huge and the fact that yeah you start walled a fast imperial could be on the cards of course Turks yep. getting that free gunpowder allowing them to push out that much faster uh, with very powerful units once they reach the imperial age that's it they've also got the free castle there as well so janissary straight off the bat and the fact is, well, they don't have to put up a building once they hit castle, they can still go up to Imperial. Yeah, so I mean, they don't even have to take extra stone or, or extra wood to get to castle age buildings. So, you know, with that faster gold gathering, with the fact that Turks make an incredibly powerful um, in Imperial civilization with, with gold, we could see that happen. Um, and I would, I would love that. It would be great. Yeah, if we see a really fast, heavy Imperial game, I'd, I'd be completely happy. One thing that I think is certainly possible here, though, and something that perhaps Eddie would pull off, is, uh, for instance, a castle drop. Um, putting a forward castle on your opponent, managing to break down their stone walls and getting in with Janissaries can be huge. Obviously, um, they will have to take quite a bit of stone to do that, but it can work out very well because, obviously... Janissary is quite a long-ranged unit. They do pack a good punch as well, and they're just villager killing machines, really. Yeah, that's exactly it. And like we've said, Eddie pretty used to having this tactic. And something I should point out really quickly for people who don't play a lot of Age of Empires or have never heard of Regicide: uh, both players start off with a king, and if you lose that king, that's game over. Yeah, of course, most games it doesn't actually come down to the killing of the king. Uh, one player would GG before the king dies. But you've got to bear in mind as well that players will be scouting with their kings. Uh, scouting with the king is great. It moves very fast. It has a very high line of sight. And, of course, that will give you a much more map visibility. But the downside is that if it dies, it's GG. So, I mean, I have seen Regicide Fortress games that are over in a couple of minutes where the kings, like, got trapped and got killed by the castle. It's quite amusing. Yeah, run straight past the castle, cop a few arrows, and that's game. Yeah, I think Eddie playing it a little bit more safely right now. Not sure where his king is, perhaps in one of the towers. Uh, top tower. Yeah, it's in his tower. He's not scouting with it. So that is why Falcon Shrey has a good score lead right now. Both of them up to feudal, very close times indeed, and Fast Castle, of course, going to be on the cards. Yeah, just looking at the resources right now, we're going to see Smith, uh, well, potentially not even Smith, because they've already got that free barracks. Uh, we're probably going to see, yep, Market Smith anyway for Falcon Shrey, and what are we going to see for Eddie in a few seconds here? Probably going to be the same. Uh, the question is what they do after the castle age upgrade. Yeah. Do they castle drop or do they fast imperial? Uh, Eddie's already taking some stone right now, so I mean that's possible. Yeah, he's got the two villages there, so he could try and get a lot of stone out. Either that, he could be going for a huge boom, which I'm kind of thinking... I don't think that's really an Eddie style to do, so definitely could be going for that castle drop you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, if one th if we've seen anything today, it's how aggressive Eddie plays uh, once he gets into the castle age. In Feudal, yeah, he does hold back quite a bit from what I can see, but, oh man, right now he doesn't have Loom. Gonna lose a villager. Oh, he lost <laughs> it, and... Oh man, that was quite oh, funny. Oh, wow. 
Falcon Shrey. I didn't Shrey. notice he didn't have that. Yeah, Falcon Shrey just getting in there with his scout, taking out Eddie's villager right there because he doesn't have loom. And he's gonna get, he's gonna lose his scout, but I'd say that was worth it. He's already scouted the map. Yeah, he's always got that king if he really needs it. <laughs> uh, but still, free villager there for um, Falcon Shrey, so very nice. Yeah, very well played. As I was saying before that, Eddie then, once he gets up to the castle age, it, he does play very aggressively. Um, and I think that works out very well for him. It's definitely in his style. Um, so, you know, we could see that from Eddie right here. He's taking a lot of stone. We could see a forward castle. Uh, could certainly be on the cards. Falcon Shrey then, not really giving too much away right now. No uh, stone income at the moment. And... Quite a bit of gold, so maybe we'll see some Janissaries to take some map control, maybe some monks even, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a high wood count for him, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see him drop two town centers, and then he's even got a bit of gold, so if he goes two town centers, gets out a few Janissaries to try and do a little bit of harass, I wouldn't be surprised at that point, but town centers, I'm thinking at this point, pretty much definite. Yeah, of course. Uh, there we go. Falcon straight up to castle. First thing he's going to do is get loom. Of course, if that if he's leaving his base with any villagers, going to want to do that. Of course, uh, yeah, they don't start with gold on Regicide Fortress. We know that. But obviously, the fact that he had the villager out and lost it to the scout is kind of a big deal. Uh, Eddie then up to castle right now. And let's see if this castle drop's going to come in. I mean, he's still taking the stone right now. We'll see if he puts down a second or third TC. Not enough uh, wood to do so at the moment. Yeah, Falcon Trey putting down his third town center now on that front. Wood has his second over on the gold. So it looks like he will be going mostly economy here. Has got some Janissaries out there to try and go for some harass. Yeah, uh, both of them going to do that. I mean, it's similar when you watch Mayans. They're both going to be making some unique units straight away. I mean, they create reasonably quickly. And obviously, they're quite a powerful unit to get out straight away once you hit Castle. So both of them there going for those Janissaries. Going to try and take the map control and maybe even get some harassment in wherever they can as well. Yeah, for a Castle Age unit, 8 range, 17 attack, that is a huge amount of power to be having. So, getting the units out like this straight away, because of course, with like 4 of them, you can start killing off villages just in one hit. So, really good move to make. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, certainly. Eddie then, is he going to push out? No, it looks like he, well, it looks like he's going to push out with 3. Could be a bad mistake from him, because Falcon Shrey, coming in right now with 5 Janissaries. Eddie has got five as well. Obviously, Janissary is not the most accurate units in the world. Going to have to close the gap a little bit there to be really effective. And so good micro yeah. by both players, though. No and neither one of them going to lose a unit. Yeah, neither of them losing Ooh. a single unit right there. Really nicely done indeed. Uh, but what is on the cards right now? Well... We'll have a quick look. Obviously, uh, Falcon Shrey going to be going for much more eco here. No fast Imperial from him. But Eddie still only on the 1TC right now. And he has put down... Oh, wait. I'm looking at the wrong person. <laughs> nearly nearly got enough to put down a castle. Eddie about to lose. Yep, that's all his Janissary is gone now. That's actually really going to hurt because he's going to lose this front area here. So if he wanted to drop a castle, those Janissaries can be able to push it back really quickly now. Yeah, that is really huge. Obviously, Eddie right now wanting to drop that castle, but not going to be able to do it if he doesn't have the uh, the Janissaries out to protect the villagers building it. So a siege workshop going down. Maybe uh, a Manganel or something. Yeah, a Manganel going to come out. But, you know, it's going to be tough. Janissaries have eight range. That is a lot of range to deal with. Yeah, especially considering the Manganel at this point will only have seven. So a bit hard to deal with. He's kind of going to have to get the jump on those Janissaries, I think. Yeah, I agree. And obviously, Falcon Shrey now, after killing off a lot of Eddie's Jan Janissaries already, it's going to make it that much harder for Eddie to actually get back into this. And, you know, if he doesn't do the damage while he can, it's going to be very quickly a GG because Falcon Shrey going to have a much better economy. Uh, not a problem for him at all. Yeah, I'm just looking at this one here. It looks like Eddie is waiting to put out that Manganel right now. It looks like he wants to run out and just hit them. Yeah. But it's going to be, like I said, they've got such a high line of sight and, oh, he's seen it already. Yeah, so seven range on the Manganel, eight on the Janissary. It's going to be tough. I mean, if, if Falcon Trade micro as well, he just hits the, uh, hits the Manganel and then goes Ooh. back. Got it. Oh, man. He got it. Losing four, though, in the process. Eddie going to take the advantage in terms of Janissaries and now going to push out and probably go with that castle on the front right here. Very good shot there by Eddie. Definitely got him the small advantage. Going to keep pushing out with Janissaries, like he said. And this castle's hopefully going to come up. And, ooh, 10 HP on that, actually. Oh, 
Oh, I thought he nearly yeah. wasn't going to cancel it. Okay. I thought those Janissaries were going to get it and it was going to lose the stone. That would have been mad if you managed to do that, but it wasn't to be. Eddie then, going to get this castle up, not a problem. And man, if, if Falkishray can't stop this castle, it's going to be in range of this TC. And that is, well, goodbye TC. Goodbye a lot of resources. And Eddie's ready to put the pressure on. Yeah, then we're going to have double Janissary production there for Eddie. And he's just going to be able to kind of just steamroll in here. Especially with the amount of gold he's got in the bank, he's going to be able to start really doing some damage. And even got another Manganel there ready to go. Yeah, the only issue for Eddie right here is he might have a little bit of trouble with taking out Falcon Trace walls here. Obviously, he's not put the castle on the wall, so he can't break down the wall with the castle. Maybe if he makes a ramp, it could happen, but countered quite easily by Janissaries if they're, well, there's a few Janissaries behind. And also, even a Manganel could take the rams out or stop rams from getting through the walls very easily indeed. Yeah, and it looks like this castle will come up on the front right now. This is Eddie's foothold into Falcon Stray's base from here. This is where he's going to have to push from, and it looks like he's still chasing villages across the map right now. Yeah, uh, over on the left-hand side. <laughs> That's quite funny. Falcon Stray putting up a TC there, but Eddie sees all. Eddie knows all, and <laughs> he's going to chase them down, see where they're off to, and there we go. He will spot that, and I would be surprised if that TC goes up. I will say that. Goes up, yeah. I would be very surprised too. Gonna lose a few villages there. This is actually really good for Eddie right now. Managed to force that town center to be deleted, and he's gonna kill off a few extra villages here. Uh, really good spot for him. He's managing to. He didn't go for the extra town centers, so it means he was behind on eco. But he's slowly starting to pull it back here. Yeah, he is. I mean, this is really kind of impressive. I mean, for quite a while his score was so far behind. He lost that initial skirmish with the um, with the Janissaries there. But the fact that right now. He's got quite a few kills off uh, of kills of Entree's units, and he's taking out this TC on the front, which is a lot of wasted wood and stone right there. I mean, four farms and yeah. the, a TC, that's a lot of resources gone. Plus, if we look at his resources right now in the bank, Imperial should be any second, and there we go. Yep, up to Imperial he goes. Wow. A lot of gold being taken right Ooh. there by him. Also, if you notice over in the right left side. of our... Oh. Yeah, left yeah. side of Falcon Trey's base, he did actually cut through the wood there, but he has put a house up just in time. Oh, on the left. Oh, right there. Oh, I see. Man, I didn't notice that. I was actually looking at the right-hand side with the villagers from Falcon Ah, uh, well, both sides. There's a lot <laughs> going on right now. Yeah, I was like, Eddie really playing this well. Yeah, Eddie, going to keep him on his toes because Janissary is good at picking off any stray villagers. Looks like on, uh, Falcon Stray has the numbers inside here, though. Uh, but, yeah, that, I mean, man, Falcon Stray right now... In a bit of a tough spot, he's going to be up against a Imperial um, Turk player, and that's... Turk. Yeah, you know, a Siege Workshop and Bombard Cannons, Treb's c a possibility, lots of Janissaries, it's going to be tough. As well as the fact that, if he wanted to, he could quite easily switch into Hazar to get some raiding done. Yeah, exactly. The only problem with that I'm seeing is the fact that he doesn't have a lot of farms available. The wood is there, the fact is the wood's there. I feel like he's saving that more for, ha um, for Bombard Cannons, but still... Yeah. I don't know, the resources are there. He's got a lot of options at the moment uh, compared to Falcon Shrake, who just really doesn't have a lot he can do. It, it's interesting to me. It's not very often that you see players putting up TCs all around the map, but I don't know. He's put his TC up on the right-hand side here, perhaps hoping that he wouldn't have to keep an eye on it, really, and just build up around it and be safe. Obviously out of the sight of Eddie here, but here we go. Eddie is about to hit the Imperial Age right now. Falcon Shrey needs a castle, and he's got, well, he's got his initial castle. Of course, he's going to get a second in a moment, I feel. Yeah, that's exactly right here, and I'm hoping for another amazing Manganel hit from Eddie here, because he hasn't disappointed today with his Manganels. Yeah, he's been very, very good with his Manganels today, I've got to say. Uh, but, man, Eddie is up to him, and Falcon Shrey... He's going to be in such a bad position right now. Losing these Janissaries is a big deal. Of course, chemistry researched straight away for the Turks. And right now... Ooh, only going to get one with that Manganel, though. But going to be able to kill a lot of villagers off around this castle here, actually. Potentially. Maybe. maybe. I mean, he could have gone for the villagers. It looks like he should go for the villagers, really. But I don't know. Um, Mikering really, really well. He is doing a yeah. lot of damage to Falcon Shrey's army right there. Um getting back but now this is the big problem for falcon Shrey. where's his military really he's got five uh, janissaries right there mostly eco and he's gonna be up against bombard cannons any second which is yeah we've got a news. second bombard cannon on its way out for eddie right now plus a trebuchet uh, eddie's ready to do damage yeah i mean he can 
pretty much very quickly switch back into double genius reproduction after that trebs out, which he will do. And yeah, he's cutting it very fine. He's got very little income of resources, but he's investing it all in military right now. And that's how he likes to play very aggressively. And I know we can see this castle go down pretty quick from Falcon Shrey. He's still castle. Yeah, it's, it's a really risky strategy to have because, of course, it means that your opponent's definitely going to be able to turn out a lot more units than you, so you really have to finish them off or do enough damage to really just destroy the bonus they're getting there. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how he decides to do this, but it looks like Trebuchet's Bombard Cannons can just get rid of that castle and hopefully sweep in through this side here. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Falcon Shrey does have a few Janissaries here. Of course, with such long range, they can get in and snipe, but I don't know. Eddie has got the Janissaries to back it up, I feel. If he does this well, he might be alright, and even though, yeah, even though Falcon Shrey's got good micro, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Ooh, oh, losing a Bombard Cannon though, very expensive unit to be losing. Second Trebuchet coming into the mix right now, but Falcon Shrey microing well here. Yeah, at, yeah, he is microing extremely well, moving in, dodging a lot of shots, but even so, I still feel like he's not got the numbers here to deal with this. Eddie just has too many Janissaries, I feel, and with the Bombard Cannons as well, taking out the occasional Janissary here and there, yeah, not making life yeah. easy for Falcon Shrey at all. And it looks like he's just getting right in there. A little bit too close, though, right under the castle. Going to have to reinforce quickly here, because, of course, be Falcon Shrey, yeah, having the reinforce bonus here, could lose some very expensive units. He could, but I don't know if he will. More Janissaries from Eddie right now, and that's it. Uh, Falcon Shrey has to get back. There's nothing he can do to stop this. Castle will probably then go down. Two trebuchets and a Bombard Cannon to uh, take that one out. And... Uh, well, man, Falcon Shrey, what is he going to do right now? He's still castle. A lot of gold in the bank, though. I mean, he could, could potentially try and buy his way up to Imperial right now. He has enough stone and gold to be able to do it, but I think he's going to need those resources, honestly. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I mean, no food at all, really. I mean, he really needs that, but, you know, yeah, he could buy his way up to Imperial, as you say. Uh, could be a possibility. At the moment, though, it looks like he's really just focusing on microing these units, keeping this castle alive as best he can. And I've got to say, he is making amazing trades. He is doing so much damage to Eddie right here for, uh, with the few Janissaries that he actually has, uh, which is quite impressive. I mean, this castle still up for now as well as, you know, Falcon Shrey almost at 2k gold at this stage. The bad news for Eddie, though, he has just run out of gold in his main base, and he actually hasn't got anywhere else mining gold right now, so Ooh. that's going to really stunt this push from him, and this might be the chance Falcon Shrey needs to push it back. Yeah, going to take out that Bombard Cannon, then. Could take out the Trebuchets Ooh. as well. Oh, just going to get it. If he micros this nicely, uh, this could be the end of Eddie's push. Eddie, as you say, doesn't have any gold income. He's got this little uh, gold patch on the right, which a lot of villagers are idle at. Oh, man. Is Falcon Shrey, I think he's actually going to keep this castle up and probably take out yeah. the as well. Yep, he's going to retreat with those trebuchets. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Falcon Shrey really defending well. Yeah, there we go. Trump is going to get back, and I would not have thought that possible, really. Um, that, that was really impressive. His micromanagement there off those units, just really, really good. Um, and, yeah, he's got a lot of gold in the bank still. Ooh, just uh, lost a 200 gold trebuchet two there, so really yeah. not looking good right now for Eddie, actually. Yeah, it's seeding a lot of farms right now. He does need to get up to the Imperial Age. I think Imperial for Falcon Shrey now could really hit the nail in the coffin of Eddie, because he just his eco is so small at this stage. Eddie has been on 1TC this entire time. Um, he lost his push, which is what you really need to win if you're going to do 1TC pressure. And yep. yeah, Falcon Shrey is in a good position. Yeah, Falcon Shrey nearly on double the, t well, actually just hitting double the population of Eddie right now. So that shows you just how far in front he actually is in eco and military at the moment. That's, that's mind-boggling, really, especially considering this gold is in the middle of nowhere and it's about to be harassed, so Eddie just lost all of his gold income. Yeah, which is no small uh, thing to have to deal with. Uh, Falcon Shrey putting up TCs all over the map right now, which I find quite amusing. They are everywhere. And uh, I don't really know the reason for that. I think really he just wants to make sure his economy is safe, of all things. And obviously putting it right in the corner of the map, Eddie's not really going to find it. And, you know, he can pretty much rest easy knowing that that eco is going to be safe. All right. Eddie's back, second attempt on that castle right now. He has a lot of Janissaries there ready to do this. He has a trebuchet, a bombard cannon. Uh, definitely another option to take this one down here, but... I don't know, not in the best position. He was in a lot better position last time, but Falcon Shrey is going up to Imperial now. 
yeah, Falcon Shrey is up to him. Upgrades wise, they are even. Eddie has not taken advantage of the Imperial upgrades. He's not gone for any um, uh, elite genissary or anything like that. And I don't know, Falcon Shrey could come in here and just take out the Treb if he wanted, but he would suicide a lot of genissaries. He's going to continue to repair the castle up. Uh, but yeah, he is up to Imp right now, and in that position, he is going to be in such a good place once he reaches Imperial. I agree. He managed to rebuild this castle. It's not like he doesn't have the stone to do it. And the longer he keeps Eddie here as well, the longer he's just being able to just pick away at those units. Because like you said, Eddie doesn't have a big economy. The more that Enshrey can pull out of him before he hits Imperial, uh, essentially for free, the better. Yeah, exactly. I think once he gets in, uh, Falcon Shrey, you know, he's got a lot of farms. He's got, well, he's got a hell of a lot of farms. So you could just go like Mass Hazar or even get some... Um rams in the back here and break down Eddie's wall and just go <laughs> into his economy and gut it. Eddie really doesn't have a lot yeah. to defend. Ooh, that trebuchet about to go down as well and yeah. there we go, that castle is safe again. Yet again, there's oh, the GG wow. from Eddie. He knows at that stage, you know, he would not be able to do it. it. So many resources lost. Two trebuchets, probably five or six bombard cannons. That's no small amount of gold to be losing so easily. Oh, that's... I was expecting, again, Eddie in a really good spot, but someone just knocking them down really quickly. This really has been a match, well, a series completely, where it's been no one's game the whole way through. Yeah, it could have been anyone's, really. I mean... Eddie played some fantastic games this series. Falcon Shrey as well, proving obviously that he is the better player in this situation. But, yeah, I've got to say, I mean, that game, really interesting because Eddie just... He was so close. To taking it. I think he really focused on this castle too much. Perhaps if he'd have changed his point of attack, perhaps even gone for the gate of Falcon Shrey at the front. Yeah. And gone for the just gone for the king. Yeah, if he just pushed straight into the middle of Falcon Shrey's base, there was nothing there to defend it. I mean, what what if Eddie had just made like, I don't know, five or six bombard cannons, maybe even a couple of petards, broke down that stone wall and just assassinated the king of the tower? I mean that that would have won him the game. Definitely could have been an option. I feel like that castle that actually had the king in it would have been a lot harder to actually defend as well, considering the fact he had that first castle down to the point where it couldn't have anything garrisoned in it. Exactly. King could have just been ejected and just game from bombard cannons. Exactly. I, Eddie really should have had that game right there, but Falcon Shrey took it, and, you know, I'm surprised he managed to keep that castle alive. Really good endurance from him on that, but... There we have it. Falcon Shrey takes the series five games to three. And uh, that concludes the Barbecue Empire's Best of Nine Bonanza Series 1. That is exactly it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed what we had. We tried to pick a fun map pool, just fun map pack in general. And just try to make the games as fun as possible. So, yeah. of course, give us your feedback. There's a link in the chat there where to do it. Because, of course, the more feedback you give us, the better this will be overall. Yeah, I agree.